Start single vehicle, telephone pole, start windshield and bent steering wheel. Still got a pulse, but weak. Let me see. Raccoon eyes. Probably a basal or skull fracture. What'd you say happened? Try to flatten her sedan into a telephone pole. No skid marks. Attempted suicide by car. Bullshit. She just had a bomb go off in her head. Let's get on a ventilator, get her more fluids. This is no suicide. Call Wilson. It's very serious. I won't kid you, your daughter's in rough shape. What are the odds? The odds improve with Ty Wilson doing the procedure. There are about five brain surgeons the rest of us in neurosurgery aspire to be. This doctor's one of them. Yes, I understand that every life must be end. Number three, please. Give me that pen feel. Well, what's her story? School teacher, 25, no prior history. Have you found the aneurysm? I will. Thanks. Help you, sir? Yeah, I thought you might be interested in some new state-of-the-art scopes. Yeah, we're fine. Okay, but I think if you try and not a good here. time. I need you to leave, sir. Now. Sure. I'll uh just come back at another time. Right. Remind me never to cross you, Dr. Ridgeway. <laughs> gotcha. There it is there, pushing down on the oculomotor nerve. You see that? Barely. Straight clip? Yeah. Fenestrated. All right, let's see mm. how we do. We're... She's gonna be fine. We clipped it off. We expect a full recovery. <laughs> Sheila will be sedated through the night. I recommend you all try to get some sleep. I'm gonna be here all day tomorrow. We can talk. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> Mrs. Suckliff, look at me. Your daughter will be fine. Thank you. I don't want anyone touching me. This is a racket, if you ask me. You give me one pill after another one, after another one, after another one. I've been up in here five times already. Everything OK? Not for me, it isn't. I think you people all want me to die. Is that it? We actually don't, ma'am. In fact, we've implemented a new policy where we now want our patients to get well. Oh, you think this is funny? I will jump out of this bed and crush you like a little bug. What's going on? She first arrived three months ago with headaches and a persistent cough. Chest. They did an HP, suspected it was a viral infection, head. and discharged her. And she head. came two weeks later with a fever. She was prescribed amoxicillin, Bactrim, codeine. Back again a month later, diagnosed with bronchitis, and now she's here for shortness of breath. Who's he attending? Lieberman. Look, weren't you supposed to be getting engaged tonight? Sorry, there, 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 there was a rumor. Yeah, well, maybe you could be less curious about my social life, a little more so in this patient's condition. I know what tests were ordered, see if she was exposed to any airborne irritants or toxic chemicals, and contact the attending. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Ridgeway. Hi, Buck. I'm sure you did get the directive affording instrument reps access to the OR. Yeah, I did, Buck. Thanks. Don't you be snide with me. Fact is, these reps know as much, if not more, about the devices we implant than we do. And they we... also influence the surgeons, and not for the better. What surgeons name one surgeon? Cy Greenberg. Last year, a rep told him during a TKA to shave a little more bone off the tibia so his high-tech prosthetic would fit. That patient can barely walk now. Why, well, hey, Dr. Wilson, how interesting to find you in bed with Dr. Ridgway on this. Is there a problem? Yes, there's a problem. Dr. Ridgway rudely expelled a manufacturer's rep from the OR, which just 
jeopardizes our very valued relations with Barton devices. Yeah, the same company, it so happens, that's paying for Dr. Tierney's heart and ambulatory wing. I resent your implication. Uh, Dr. Ridgway, I appreciate your concern, but the matter was put to a vote which authorized the reps to be present. Excuse me? I didn't vote. Neither did I. Well, it seems I did. Room 311. Morbidity and mortality. Who for? Do we know? I didn't kill anyone this week, you? Not me. Buck, you didn't kill anybody this week, did you? You want to check your notes? It's 007. Dr. Martin. for aneurysm, huh? Discriminate. I'm sorry to hear that song, baby. All right, let's get started, shall we? Uh, wait, can I have the floor for one brief second, please? I implanted a pacemaker this past week on a man with severe cardiomyopathy as a result of Chagas disease. For you. So we are seeing a lot more diseases once reserved for the third world in tropical climate. Yeah, thank you, Doctor. We now have a patient, Joanne Whitman. She has been in five times. Yeah. Come we... on, Doctor. Hey, you know what? Forgive me for caring. Shoot me. Okay, bang. Okay. <laughs> Settle down. Dr. Martin. Let's talk about Mary Michalidos, shall we? Please. Mary Michalidos, age 39, presented on August 12th with soreness of her left hip. She was an avid runner, 30 miles a week. I thought the hip irritation was due to all the running. I prescribed 1,000 milligrams of extra strength Tylenol until the pain subsided. Did the pain subside? Well, I didn't know. I didn't hear from her. The next I saw her was on uh, December 19th. She was in the ER with a broken hip. From all that running? No, sir. I ordered an MRI with contrast, which revealed stage four bone cancer. Doctor, that first time you saw her, did you do a full physical examination? Did you order any x-rays? Blood work? No, sir. Did you do anything other than prescribe extra strength Tylenol? In retrospect. In retrospect. We also love to separate the conjoined twins, don't we? rebuild the shattered faces, but sometimes it's the little things, isn't it? Dr. Martin, this is what can happen when you let a runner with a sore hip limp out of here without a second thought. You allowed metastatic cancer to run amok for four months. So please tell us, how does this particular fairy tale end? Ms. Nicolitos was admitted to the ICU on December 19th. Aggressive cancer treatments were started immediately. She died yesterday. Three weeks from diagnosis. Yes, sir. Dr. 
Dr. Martin, you're affectionately known among your peers and colleagues as 007. Do you know why that is? Please tell us, Doctor. I believe it has something to do with... License to kill. Mm, it's not a very nice nickname for a surgeon, is it, Doctor? I should be recommending to the board of this hospital that your medical privileges be pulled immediately. You're excused, 007. Any further conversation in this room, you shall not be privy to. That's it? Is that it? So he can kill people as long as he does it at a different hospital. You're out of line, Doctor. There's at least three people that we know of who might still be alive if it wasn't for this hat. And everyone in this room is feeling sorry for him. Gato. Mary Michalidis, 39, beloved wife of Stefan Michalidis, beloved mother of Eric 10, Darren 8, and little Danielle 6, who adored her mother's everyday kindness. Beloved daughter of Frank and Martha Kelly, who couldn't have prayed for a daughter as loving, kind, and beautiful as their Mary. They should have prayed she got a better doctor. Dr. Villanueva. I've been paged. What's all the fun in here? Oh, this is Quinn McDaniels, future Olympic soccer star. There's Mom Allison. Uh, Dr. Villanueva. How you doing, Quinn? I'm fine. Quinn had a head-to-head -head collision in a game last night. He was having some headaches, so his mom brought him in just to be safe. Okay, got it. Now look straight ahead. Mm-hmm. Jeez, I'm seeing ice cream in those eyes. Mm-hmm. You feeling okay, buddy? I feel fine. Good. Walk with me a sec. We ordered up an MRI, mainly as a precaution. My God. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Well, it's got to come out, obviously. Your mother's outside. A brain tumor? In his temporal lobe. It's very large, and my fear is it could be malignant. Oh, my God. Ms. McDaniels, if we don't operate immediately, your son is at risk to die. I don't mean to be so abrupt, but we cannot delay. I won't know exactly how serious it is until I get in there. In the meantime, we'll get some more imaging studies, and I need to get any relevant history from you. When would you operate? Now. This morning. I have done every test known to man. There is nothing left. Well, you can't just discharge her. I'm sorry, but aren't you a surgeon? Meaning what? I should stick to my own patient? Seems I should worry more about yours. And that makes it official. You are the most obnoxious person I've ever met. You two are giving me a truckload of confidence right now. Hey, you paged me? I did, actually. I was wondering if you would take your rogue pit bull back to the surgery kennel. Excuse me, what did you just say? No, he paged you. Not wrong, Tina. That woman just keeps getting sicker while that hack sits on his ass. <laughs> I take it it did not go well last night. That has nothing to do with this. He said what happened? Nothing. It was a normal day. We had wine, food. He gave me a diamond ring, took it back, and I went home. Whoa. What was that last part? I went home. Before that. He gave me a diamond ring. Oh, my God. I got a page while he was proposing. Evidently, he hates it when that happens, and, uh, we broke up. You broke up? It's no big deal. Oh, honey. She's been this way almost two years. It's like she's possessed by the devil. I can't write. I can't drive. She's been tested so many times, but no one seems to find anything. It's God. He's punishing me for some reason. Uh, we know he works in mysterious ways, Doctor, but we also feel we've been sent to you for a reason. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, Doctor? No. You want God? Go to church. Come back when you want to talk about facts. 
Well, no call to be rude. Not rude. No God here, you're gone. You want facts. Okay, here's a fact. It stops when I drink wine. I don't normally partake in alcohol, but it stops when I have wine. Don't drink alcohol normally? No, sir. Depression medication? No, sir. Tremors when sleeping? Yes, sir. Do you think that you... Quiet! Thinking. Okay, Quinn, you may feel a little pressure as we drill, but no pain. Is it big? The drill? Uh, not too. Here it is. Here. Tiny little bit there, you see that? Yeah. Won't hurt at all, I promise. Vitals are stable. All right, all set? Yep. Okay. A 10, please. Daniels. I'm Harding Hooten. I'm chief of staff here at Chelsea. But there's no news yet. They've only just started. You know, one of the things they don't teach us at medical school is how to talk to a parent whose child is undergoing major brain surgery. But I can tell you that Dr. Tyler Wilson is not only one of the best surgeons in the world, he's also a committed and compassionate doctor who will treat your son as if he were his own. Would you like me to stay here for a bit? What else? You need no. Beta blockers. Guessing. Benzodiazepine. What else? Need no. What difference between intention tremor and essential tremor? Um, intention tremor is dyskinetic movement during voluntary movement. Etiology. Cerebral cerebellum. How treated? Well, medication is the most common. My daughter could tell that, huh? She's five. I said, it. On densitron, propenanol, prima donna, not effective. What's surgical? Deep brain stimulation. That the way you talk to patient? Hmm? Asking? Like a foreigner with a restroom? I thought DBS was a last resort. Thought wrong. Okay, let's resect it. Irrigation. What is that? Okay, suction. Irrigation. You okay there, Quinn? Yes. Blood pressure's dropping. Put him out. Irrigation. He's out. Let's get him intubated. Keep that suction going. Yeah. Through the cords. Well. Hook up the vent. Gel foam. He's throwing PVCs. Come on, come on. More gel foam. We've got three transfusions going. Why the hell won't he clot? He's going into DIC. Got the page. What do you need? I got a blood bath here. I need more hands. Okay. Transfusions? They're up to three. Oh. He's going into defib. Need the paddles. Right here. Pressure's still falling. Hang another two units. Clear. Clear. Hanging the unit on the rapid infusion. Damn, it's still VPIP. Again? Clear. 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 He's an asystole. Test strike. Get out of my way. Come on. Keep up. Test strike. Nurse, close. Give me the knife. 
Give me the ten blade. I'm a death. 11.47 a.m. I need to go talk to the mother. Oh, no, hold on, you can't go out there like that. Huh? Go shower and change first. be awake while you're poking around in my brain mm. only way do I find the exact part of brain cause problem and you you've done this before once how's that patient doing dead <sighs> how soon can we do it wait 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 no no H honey did you not hear what he just said I don't care I want these things to stop as I, soon as possible I know I know, I know that I doctor What's the worst case scenario? Dead. Always oh, dead the worst case. You okay? We all lose them. There was no chance. It was everywhere. Is he okay? I'm not sure. I'm sorry. He didn't make it through surgery. I 
I'm so sorry. <sighs> the uh, tumor is just. I know. Did all you could. Try to keep dinner warm. It's in the oven. Thanks. Uh, I was called to the OR. Ah. It's gonna be perfect. Maybe I'm not trying my Wake up. What's your name? Dr. Oda Brini. I'm Dr. Sydney Nippur. I want you to order up a lung scan or a CT angio for a patient named Joanne Whitman. Joanne Whitman. Uh, you mean the bronchitis? No, not bronchitis. She's at risk for an embolism if she hasn't thrown one already. Wake up your attending. His name's Lieberman. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. Wake him up. Tell him his patient is circling the drain. And so will his career be if he doesn't get his ass in here. Hey, you. <sighs> it's the middle of the night. Now, sometimes you gotta hit the off button or you won't survive this place. That do no harm rule, it goes for yourself, too. Oh, please, Gato, like you hit the off button? You're here at two in the morning, what's that about? I hit the off button all the time, and you know I do. Yeah, well, six beers and sex with a stranger isn't my idea of a breather, so. You ever try it? Look, um, what's going on with you? He said I'd make for a horrible mother. What's his name, the guy I used to go out with? He said I'd make for a horrible mother. Because I'm too married to this place. Well, right now you are. But when the day comes and you decide to become a mother, You'll probably be the best at that, too. Thank you. Now, go home and get some rest. Go. Yeah. Bye. <sighs> Damn chopstick. Dr. Napur. Thank you. You were right. Mrs. Whitman had a pulmonary embolism. She's now on round-the-clock infusions of heparin. She'd been throwing tiny emboli to her lungs. You... you have my gratitude. Oh. Bet you're feeling all cocky now, huh? Itty-bitty little cocky thing, you. Hey. Eh, never mind what the hay. It's time for you to listen to me now. Thank you. You probably saved my life. More than I could say for this one. As much as I'd like to stand here and chew what little fat you have on your hips, he doesn't want me throwing a clot. Thank you. Anyway, what she said, you 
probably did save her life. Another M&M? &M? What really goes on in those meetings? Just once, I would love to sit in on one of those things. Yeah? Yeah. Become a surgeon. Look there. Ventral intermediate nucleus of thalamus. Doctor, will this be painful? Is it gonna hurt? Not hurt. Be quiet. Center of brain. <laughs> Write the paper. Try again. You going to be okay, son? Ty? Ty? What are you thinking about? She never even asked, the mother. What makes you, why should I trust my son's life to you? She never even asked. They never knew. Ty, there was nothing, I saw his brain, there was nothing you could do. What did she say to you after? I saw her say something. She said, uh, this must be so hard for you. She was consoling me. Sosera, reach for my hand. <laughs> oh, my God. Take my forcep. <laughs> Give me forcep. Stop clapping. OK, wave left hand twice. OK, make OK sign. Done. Dr. Ari calls up, please, huh? Success, I'm told. Complete. Tremor stop. Oh, that must be quite thrilling. I imagine most neurosurgeons will be quite excited to perform a DBS. But I'm curious, did we fully exhaust all pharmacological options before opting for this procedure? Yes. Between a rock and a ball, hmm? DBS only viable option. Insinuate me? Oh, no. First of all, I did not insinuate you. If I insulted you, that certainly wasn't my intention. It's just we talked as a human. We can all get caught up in the excitement of exploring our craft. And the chance to perform a deep brain stimulation must have been very tantalizing. Now, accepting your word that you were caught between a rock and an eight ball, perhaps we should be discussing your language skills, Dr. Park. Well, we're both late for a meeting. Can we say my office in the morning? 
Shall we walk together? You talk to all doctors about our language? Only those between rocks and eight balls. So you saved the woman after all. Yes, I did. The Lieberman even admitted it, so there. All right, here we are again. Uh, I really appreciate you all agreeing to stay on a little bit later. Um, first, uh, quick congratulations to Dr. Sung Clark for a very successful deep brain stimulation. Well done, Dr. Clark. Okay. Moving on. Dr. Wilson, could you take us through the matter of Quinn McDaniels, please? It was approximately uh, 7.30 in the morning when I was called to the emergency room to evaluate a seven-year-old boy, Quinn McDaniels. His mother had brought him in as a precaution after a head-on-head -head collision in a soccer game. He presented an excellent health. His BP, heart rate, respiration were all normal. His CT scan, however, revealed a massive temporal lobe tumor which appeared malignant. The decision to operate was made immediately. By whom? Me. Consult with esteemed colleagues. I discussed with Dr. Villanueva. Got a trauma, not neurosurgeon. Well, why not ask for help? Dr. Wilson, you're surrounded by a lot of talent here. Why not seek a second opinion? It seemed pretty straightforward. Potential life-threatening surgery. And you didn't even bother to discuss it with your colleagues in neurosurgery? Isn't there anyone in your department with whom you've developed some trust? What about the boy's history? I spoke to the mother. There was no remarkable history. And his father? No, the father was out of the picture. The boy had never even met him. Well, please continue. I uh, mapped out left-sided craniotomy with a wake speech mapping. After placing immobilization pins in the right frontal area and the left occiput, we woke the boy up. I then made an incision in front of his zygoma, in front of his left ear, all the way around to the midline. The bone was removed without incident. Bleeding? Yeah, but it was easily controlled with cauterizing and clips. Continue. Then, when I saw the, the tumor, I knew we were in trouble. It was malignant. There were tentacles reaching into the normal appearing brain and it had a very angry reddish color. I began to remove it as best I could and it started bleeding way more than I expected. There was just so so much bleeding. I couldn't stop it. The boy died. Yes. Dr. Ridgeway? Do you have anything to add? No. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Wilson, you said the boy's father was out of the picture, uh, genetically? No, genetically, he would still have... Now, you didn't ask the mother to provide a contact for the father? No, I, I never thought to. You never thought to. Um, could you um, pass this to Dr. Wilson, please?
Dr. Wilson, you have in front of you a brief medical history of the boy's biological father. Could you please read out the, the highlighted portion? Von Willebrand's disease. And what is the primary symptom of Von Willebrand's disease, Doctor? Uncontrollable bleeding. The boy had a 50-50 chance of being an uncontrollable bleeder. Anyone? <sighs> Comments? Well, I have a comment. This boy was likely to die soon, but he died yesterday because of a doctor's arrogance. His unwillingness to seek a consult is neglecting to get a full and thorough history. Arrogance. We are clinicians, scientists. We observe time-honored procedures and analyses. That's how we are trained. And this is what happens when we subjugate that training to arrogance. up we all do tina i cannot hear this right now okay beat it tina please none of us came here for the bells and whistles it's the personnel these meetings, like the one where you got your ass kicked, that's what makes you a better doctor. That's all that matters, number one. Number two, we got a teenage boy being helivacked in from Ben, severed spinal cord, and he's due to arrive here in about two minutes. Well, maybe you should call soon. I'm calling everybody, but I'm especially calling you. It's an Atlanta occipital dislocation. That's right internal decapitation. Now, you got about 30 seconds to pull yourself together. Don't take him off the backboard. Yes, sir. Subarachnoid hemorrhage. Cranial vertebral junction. Oh, my God. Do one, Korea. How did that work out? Dead. Let's get our own CT plus cranial cervical MR. Are you sure we have time? Okay, we need to know what we're dealing with. Michelle, make sure anesthesia knows we're on the way. Next stabilized. So get the halo from OR-16. Oh, God. All right. What are you doing, Thor? The only thing connecting his head to his torso is skin. He's got a strong chance of heart failure. We better secure the airway before we bring him up. Need a fiber optic tray. Buck, you better scrub up. We don't know the extent of his other injuries. Harding, I'm gonna need the scans from Ben. Make sure we can do live fluoroscopy throughout. What's his heart rate? Jorge, get his coag. They hear from Ben. Normal. Good old trauma pen. What are you thinking? Occipital cervical fusion to start. <laughs>
stinker. <laughs>